Hey guys, welcome to Programming Knowledge. In this video, we'll be looking at do while loop and also the jump statements in C++. Let's get started. In the previous video, we looked at for loops and while loops, right? So let me just write down their basic structure. So you have a counter, uh, you have a condition, and then you have a growth rate of for the counter so that this particular condition becomes false at some point of time, right? And for while loop, you define the condition inside a pair of parentheses and then you have the body of the loop where you define the growth rate of that particular counter, right? So now, if you observe, if this particular condition is false at the beginning itself, this whole loop is not going to run, right? So what I'm talking about is, if I declare some variable like int i equal to zero, and in place of this condition, if I give i is less than zero, and this growth can be anything. So let's say i equal to i plus 10, something like that. So now, if you see, the starting value of i is 0. So once this condition is checked, it is false. So this whole loop is not going to execute itself. So if I write something like, uh, uh, this is the for loop statement. So this whole statement is not going to be executed at all. Let me just add a new line also. So this is the escape sequence of the new line. So now the same will happen with the while loop also. So if I just say in j equal to zero, let me just write down the same set of conditions. So j is less than zero and the growth will be j equal to j plus 10, right? And uh, let me write on that particular statement. So C out, let me just copy this thing, right? And this one will be the while loop statement. So if I execute this particular program, I won't be getting anything. So now if I just try to execute it, you will be seeing that I have a blank output, right? I don't have anything over here. So what if I want to execute this particular statement or what is a particular set of statements inside the loop at least once, right? So sometimes you are given a menu and then you are asked to choose something from that, right? So you, uh, you have something like, uh, this you have choose your option and then you have first one second one third one and uh, so on so this will continue and then you will be given a choice where you can enter your choice so in programs like this these are called menu driven programs these are called menu driven programs and uh, in programs like this what happens is you need to execute this whole set of operations at least once. If I directly press three over here, let's say three means exit, right? So you have some functions in one and two and three is exit. So if I press three, I should exit out of the program. But for that to happen, this whole set of code should execute at least once, right? So in this kind of loops, that doesn't happen. It will directly stop. Uh, when this uh, particular condition is false. So if, in the beginning itself, if the condition is false, it is going to uh, break out of the loop. So in uh, such kind of situations, what we are going to do is we are going to use the do while loop. Well, you can do that with these loops also by using the jump statements. But since I have not talked about the jump statements till now, I'll be talking about them shortly. So now we will be using the do while loop. Do while loop is relatively easier to use than jump statements. So what we are going to do is, you are going to write do, and inside this you will be uh, defining the body of the loop. So this is actually a loop, right? So here inside uh, you will be defining the loop's body, and then you will write while, and then the condition, right? So what happens here is, first you check the condition and uh, execute the statements in these loops, right? In this loop, what happens is, first you execute the statements and then check for the condition. That is the only difference between these for and while loops and this do while loop. Uh, let us execute this particular uh, same program. So let's take int k equal to zero and the same condition, which is k is less than zero. And uh, let me just copy down this particular statement inside the loops body, right? And this is the do while loop. Now, if I execute this particular program, you will be seeing that this has executed once. This is the do while loop. What happened is before checking for case less than zero, it first executed whatever is there inside this. And then it went for this particular condition check, which it turned out to be false. That's why it broke out of the loop. 
So in places where you need to execute the loop at least once, in such cases where you have this kind of menu kind of thing, you you are going to use the do while loop. It is going to be very useful and very easy to use such case. So let us quickly write a small menu driven program. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so this one is going to be a menu driven program for uh, uh, choosing between addition and subtraction. So let's say uh, do and then uh, inside this I'm going to ask for a choice. So uh, choose one for addition and two for subtraction and uh, I'll be getting a number so in uh, choice let's call it and then C in choice and then now I can switch the choices as I told you so I can use either switch case or if else I'll go to if else because I have only two numbers to compare so if choice equal to one then what you are going to do is you're going to ask for two numbers so enter number one and uh, I'll get a number int n1 c in n1 and the same thing goes for number 2 also n2 n2 and over here number 2 uh, well we can actually put this thing outside because for both addition and subtraction since we are dealing with only two numbers I'm just going to put these things outside because it really doesn't matter whether the choice is one or two right we are anyway going to ask for the two numbers for either for addition or for subtraction only thing is the which is going to change is our print statement so I'm just putting it outside the conditions over here and then if choice equal to one what we need to print is we need to print the addition or the sum so since I have only one statement I'm going to skip those curly braces and then uh, the sum is uh, we can directly print the sum or you can uh, even store it inside one of the variables and then print it. I'm not going to do that. And the same goes for the difference also, right? So if choice equal to two, then you print the difference. So difference is n1 minus n2. And over here, choice equal to two. And you can use else if over here. So instead of checking, if you put two ifs, what will happen is it will first check for this and again check for this. But if you put an else if, what will happen is if this condition is satisfied, it won't check for this one. Uh, or if you have a hierarchy of conditions, so if you have 10 conditions, if the second one is satisfied, it will directly skip to the next iteration. So wh what happens over here is if you put all ifs, or all 10 ifs, even if the second condition is satisfied, it is going to check for all the 10 conditions. So, so else if is a better choice when you have uh, two distinct choices, right? So now after printing this, what we are going to do is, we are going to ask for the user whether he wants to continue or not. So uh, do you want to continue? Uh, he's going to reply either yes or no. I'm just going to take one character. So uh, now, once you take the character, what will happen is it will be limited to the scope. So if I write something like char, uh, let's say con, and then con stands for continue. I cannot use the word continue because it's a keyword. I'll be talking about that shortly. Let's just say con means continue, right? So now if I just take in con, what will happen is this particular variable will be limited only to this scope, the highlighted braces which you are seeing here. So if you want uh, to compare that, that is not possible, right? Because the while which we are writing is outside this one, right? So while we write outside this body of the loop. So we need this variable to be accessible outside the body of the loop. So we don't want to access it outside everything else, right? We don't want to uh, uh, access this variable outside everything. So what we are going to do is we are just going to put this con over here inside the main function. So what will happen is it will be limited to this main function but since we are not dealing with other functions we are just uh, uh, using this particular one as a function variable that is it belongs to this particular function and then it can be access, access from anywhere in the function. Since this y also is inside the function it can access this continue variable now. If you had written it over here it could not have accessed it. So now we are going to do it until he says no or till he keeps saying yes. Both are equivalent statement. You can do either uh, con is not equal to s 
or you can say or sorry con is not equal to no till then you need to continue or else you need to continue till he keeps saying yes so both of them are right you can do either one of them and now if i execute this so he's asking for the choice i'm going to say 1 enter number 1 12 12 so the sum is 24 i want to continue yes if i put 2 and then 12 12 so the difference is 0 and now if i press n it is going to stop so now you see uh, how the do while loop can be used so in, uh, if you are using the for or while loop that is also possible but it's quite clumsy to implement uh, as compared to this particular do while loop so now let's talk about the jump statements i clear this we don't need this so the first jump statement we are going to look at is continue so what continue does is it will skip a particular iteration so let me show you an example so for int i equal to 1 i is less than less than or equal to 10 and i plus plus and inside this loop i'm going to uh, print something let's say uh, let's just print i right and then a new line also now uh, you know the output right it's just going to print all the numbers from 1 to 10 so now what i need is i don't want the value of 5 to be printed in the output i want all the numbers ex except 5 so one way you can do is you can do something like if i is not equal to 5 then you print all these things so this is also one of the ways to get the output what i actually uh, said so here you can see all the numbers are getting printed except 5 but uh, in some scenarios where uh, uh, what we need to do is when instead of writing everything in an if else loop we can directly skip the statements if that number is not 5 right uh, sorry if the number is 5 we, what I mean is if I have some set of statements over here so let's say um, we have this one uh, statement 1 and then I have another statement over here so statement 2 uh, let me add a new line over here so that you can differentiate so after every uh, i there is going to be a statement 1 and statement 2 but if I want that all to be executed only when uh, i is not equal to 5 what I need to do is I need to put everything inside a particular inside the body of if loop right so I need to do something like this and then here so inside this body of the if loop I'm going to get all these statements printed only if the number is not 5. The easier way to do is what we can do is we can skip those statements right. So if i is 5 we can skip those statements. So the way you skip the statements is this stays as it is but once i equal to 5 what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit continue. So what this will do is if i is equal to 5 it won't care about the next statements it won't care about any other statements inside it is just going to skip the iteration and go over to the next one so this is true with every loop so even if you have the uh, continue inside uh, the if and then you have some statement over here let's say uh, continue is triggered something like this so this statement won't be executed at all that once the continue is encountered it is directly going to skip everything and just going to the next iteration so now if i execute this you will be getting the same output okay i did not put this yeah now if you see uh, i have one two three four and then five did not print anything at all and then six seven eight nine ten right so that is the use of continue statement it's just going to skip the statements once it's not required so every statement is skipped so next thing we are going to learn about is break break is almost same like continue what it does is just going to break out of continue is just going to skip the iteration it is just uh, break is going to completely skip the loop itself so once break is encountered it's just going to come outside the loop so if i write something like uh, um, the loop has executed this is outside the loop right so this particular statement is outside the loop and now if I execute it you will be seeing that all the uh, statements are printed only up to 5 once 5 is encoded it has directly broken out of the loop and then it says loop has executed so that is the use of break statements 
so you you have encountered the break already right and switch case so this is what happens once a case is satisfied you are just going to break out of the whole switch case if you don't break out what is going to happen is it's going to follow all the statements which are associated with every switch case below that order so the next statement we are going to learn is about the go to statement so what go to is it's basically a connecting kind of a thing so you have a label so let's call something like let's call it label and then you have a set of statements inside this label so you have see out uh, hello and then uh, see out so you have these two statements right uh, let me just add a space over here so these two statements are going to be printed side by side i don't have a new line over here so now what will happen is i want to execute these statements again and again when i press something so remember the do while loop we can do the same thing with the go to statement also it's not exactly a loop but it can act like a loop so let's say i have some uh, variable over here let's call it int i so i'm going to uh, take in i and then if i is equal to let's say some number let's say 12 or 7 something like this so if I use this particular number, I want the whole thing to be executed again, right? So what I will do is go to this particular label. What this does is it will directly switch the control from here to directly over here. It will directly go from here to here or you can go from here to bottom also. It, it can go from this particular place to any place in the whole program or in the whole function. You can uh, directly skip all the statements. You can either go backwards or even forwards it completely depends upon your program but uh, here what will happen is uh, till i uh, press some other number except seven this whole statements are going to be repeated again and again so once i press enter you are saying welcome to programming knowledge i press nine enter so here you see it stopped now if i press seven it's going to continue again and again so let's say seven enter you see the same set of statements i've executed seven seven till i press seven it's going to repeat and then if i press something else it's going to stop so that is about the go to statement and then you have another statement called exit statement so what exit does is it directly breaks the whole program your program is going to end but it's not a function directly so you need to have another header file to execute it so that header file is known as the standard library header file so it is stdlib which stands for standard library but it's a c header file so it's uh, name in c++ is cstdlib so you need to type cstdlib so this is a header file and inside this you have the exit function so let's say i want to exit right after this one so i just press in exit one means exit with an error and exit zero means it's just going to exit without any error so let me show that if i execute this you can see it just ended with a return zero that is the exit code which are passed over here so it went on without any errors but now if i press one and exit so here you can see process returned one that is the exit code so one means some error right so here you can see it's terminated with a status one that is red color it means that it, it terminated abnormally so that is all for this video in the next video we'll be looking at function